watch this video and two things will happen. One, you'll be able to cut any size or shape board without thinking you have to go buying a new tool every time, oh, this board's a little different size than I'm used to. And two, you will look like an absolute operator. Wide boards and panels cannot be accurately or safely cut on a table saw. The sled or the miter gauge is gonna overhang the front, ruining safety and accuracy. If you're the hand tool type, it's too big for shooting boards. And miter saws or chop saws have, even the sliders have a max cutting width before you have to flip the board over and cut again, and that ruins the accuracy. Here are two ways for perfect cross cuts no matter the width of the board. First, I need to mark a line that is square to the reference edge. This is what I want to trim off. This first method I'm demonstrating is not nearly as cool as the next one, but it's very basic, uses tools that most woodworkers already own, and no real skills need to be developed to do it well. I mark exactly three and a half inches from that line at the top of the board and at the bottom. I try to get these as accurate as I can by eye and then we'll adjust it in just a minute. Next I flip the board around so that mark that line will be overhanging the bench top and I'm using this straight edge guide. You could use a piece of plywood, straight piece of wood or whatever else you want and sneak it up right up to those marked dots. And before doing anything else, you want to verify that, that straight edge is 90 degrees to the reference edge. You could use a square, or what I do is just take a tape measure and make sure that it's exactly the same distance from the cut line. It was off just a little bit, so I loosen the clamp and tap it until it's just right. Then after adjusting one side, I re-tighten it, and I always want to recheck the other side just to make sure it didn't get thrown off a little bit. Then I clamp the whole thing down to my bench top to make sure it's very stable, not going to move around at all. I'd say the biggest perk to this first method is that when trimming the other end, I can do two at a time. If you thought that circular saws cannot be used for furniture work, then check this out. Perfectly square and plumb cut. You want to avoid the ones with bent aluminum base plates and uh, the battery powered ones because if it gets stuck in the middle of the cut, you're done. This skill saw is so accurate it's sickening. It has a super rigid and straight base plate and has a blade that can be adjusted and most importantly hold the setting. Now for the second method. It starts with about the same setup, marking a 90 degree line where I want to cut. And yeah, that's actually the whole setup, that, that's all. One of the biggest things about hand tools versus machines is that with machines you spend a lot more time setting up for the cut and then the cut is done very quickly. With hand tools, the setup is generally much quicker, but then more time is spent on the actual cut. There's a real sense of freedom and not feeling limited by lack of a tool even when I had far less tools than I have now. As I saw, I'm trying to stick right next to the line on the waist side. Small adjustments are being made as I saw to keep it next to the line. This saw, by the way, is 20 or 22 inches long and it's 10 points per inch, meaning there are 10 saw teeth per inch. As with the last upload, I'm not cutting much out in this video of the work. You get a full look and good comparison of using hand tools versus the machines. I was cracking up at a comment during the last video doing stock prep. Someone said, after watching this video, I would definitely buy a jointer and planer. And hey, no shame in that. It sure seems like that's what most people do. So that might just mean that you're probably normal. As it gets close to the end, I go pretty light so I don't rip out a chunk of wood at the end. Next, I need to clean up the saw teeth mark and true this edge up with the plane. 
I'm using a block plane right now, but any plane will work. I'm going to advance the blade a little bit to take a deeper cut, rub a little wax. And this board is highest at the two ends with a relative low point right in the center. The plane is starting to connect on the far side and just kissing those fibers of the low point in the center. So at this point from this side it's looking really good. I'm going to flip the board around and work from the other direction next. And it's definitely important to keep making sure that the edge is square to the face also. So I flip this around and check with the square again to see exactly what needs to be planed down. I'm high on that far edge and also on the long edge facing away from the bench. So when I plane I do more on those higher points as I'm bringing this down to meet that low point in the center. A light touch with the plane and it sort of tells you when you're getting really close. And look closely at this and see that I switched the square to the other side because I only want to check for square off of the reference face. This particular board was done by hand and the other face probably isn't parallel to the reference face. I was super close but I just need to nibble away a little bit more to get it just right. So now this board is square all around. I also check it with the big square all the way across the edge and if anything is off a little bit then I true it up with the plane. We are on the money boys. I'm not going to blow any smoke here, I'll tell you honestly the first couple times that you try it with a handsaw on the plane probably not going to go very well. Stick it out, be the guy that gets things done. Not the guy that would help but I left that particular tool at home. And look guys, I realize track saws are probably really nice to have for some people but I honestly believe there's much better uses for that kind of money. 